This is a CBS News special report. I'm Charlie Rhodes with Gail King, Jeff Glor, and Anthony Mason in New York. We are following the global impact of the historic vote in Britain to leave the European Union. In just a few moments, the opening bell will ring at the New York Stock Exchange. Markets around the world plunged overnight in reaction to this stunning decision. Anthony, good morning. What do we expect to happen here? Well, that's going to be pretty ugly, Gail. I think it was ugly overnight in Europe. I mean, Britain opened down the FTSE 100. The British index was down 12% at one point. It came back off of that, but but uh, it's been bad 7 8% across European markets. And I think, I don't know if we'll touch that he here, but uh, there are just so many open questions this morning. Who's going to be leading Britain, the fifth largest economy in the world? What's going to happen to Europe? Will other nations there follow this lead to try to leave? Um, you know, and what What's going to happen uh, with Scotland, which actually wanted to stay in the European Union, but now now will be seeking a referendum to try to leave the United Kingdom? It's just, you know, th there is so much on the table that is open at this point that I think you're going to see a market that's just really doesn't know where the world is going. And uncertain is what the market hates. Hates it. Hates it. And you're seeing that here. And the market's been looking... Uh at various times in the past year or more for some sort of a correction or even a bear market. I mean, we're still flirting today with, with record highs. So there's been that, that impetus maybe for, for something to happen. This might be it. Well, I think, I, I think the real concern here is, you know, what shape is Europe going to be in in two years? I mean, this, pro this begins a two-year process of, of Britain leaving the European Union. And in that time, also, you've got elections in France and Germany and already talk in France now that this will embolden them to seek a referendum, the National Front, the, the, the very nationalist party there trying to do the same thing. So you've got a recipe for turmoil here around the world that is not going to make the markets anywhere happy. It, it really is stunning because leading up to the vote it was neck and neck we kept yeah. hearing but right yesterday they were saying yeah but it looks like they're going to pull it out that yeah. we'll be okay. Well if I was watching the returns last night at 11 about 11 o'clock uh, eastern time here which was which was three in the morning in Britain and it was literally there were a thousand votes separating the two sides oh. it was 50.1 to 49.9 percent and then things started to turn. But uh, I, I think the reality is, as much as this was on the table, nobody really expected so this was going to happen. And the interesting thing, it is both economics and politics. Yes, because the implications here, as, as we talked about on CBS this morning, the, the, the grievance list for the voters who, who voted to leave is the same virtually as, as you're hearing here for many people supporting Trump and some supporting Bernie Sanders. It's that economically they feel like they've been left behind and secondarily that they're scared about immigration. Yeah. Those were the two powerful forces that, that the Leave campaign played into. Yeah. And they feel like it's unfair that banks did well and they did. Yes, and, and they have a legitimate grievance, and, and which is what Bernie Sanders said on the show this morning and, and what voters again and again have been telling people around the world. Yeah, and they're even speaking some of the same languages that we're taking our country back. I saw one British voter today who was cheering. We are taking our country back. So we're looking at we're looking at down about two and a half percent right now, which is you know which, relative to what's happening in Europe, seems kind of small. But is yeah. I mean that's almost 500 points. That's a big number. Mm -hmm. But as you mentioned, Anthony, it's interesting. Is you know not just some of the things you're hearing in the U.S., but also the other countries in Europe now, Netherlands, uh, France. Yep. The anti-EU mm -hmm. sentiments. Interesting to see how how significant that that cleavage is as we move forward here. Well, you've got a real question now. Um, in France, in Netherlands, and, and, and also in Britain. This is going to embolden the UK Independence Party, which David Cameron called this referendum to try to marginalize the nationalist movement in the UK Independence point. Party. He made a big bet. He's lost it big. So now that party is going to be emboldened within Britain, which will embolden nationalist parties mm. in France and beyond. So what does that mean for Europe? And every European government this morning has to be asking ourselves, could we, if this referendum happens here, could we lose it? Could we lose it? They say it will be at least two years before we really see anything. Were you surprised that he stepped down so quickly? Well, he had to. He put this on the table and he got, he got clearly beaten. Yeah, no Everybody choice. said he, he could not down. survive. He couldn't yeah. survive. I mean, I think, I think that was inevitable. And I think if he'd stayed, it would have just caused even greater concern and chaos because most people knew he'd have to go. And as Charlie rightly pointed out earlier, he, he may very well be replaced by another conservative. Correct. B Boris Johnson, two guys who found themselves diametrically opposed. His on party this issue. was split. His party was split, and that was part of the reason he put this on the table to begin with. But, I mean, the real issue here now is, is we've, seen, we've seen 
we've seen a vote in a, in a country that has m many parallels to our own in which these issues of immigration and the economy are on the table. Mm -hmm. And everybody thought it was going to go one way and it didn't, it went another. What amazes me is that all the reading that I had done and all the things were written and said, people talked about a catastrophe, mm -hmm. you know, a huge blow up in the global economy. All those things would come to pass yes. if this happened. Well, we'll see what happens because no one really knows this hasn't happened before. But the interesting thing here, too, is, as you point out, the preponderance of experts and economists all said this is going to be catastrophic. And the voters ignored that. Mm. Exactly. They didn't care. Intellectually, they yes. said, I don't care about that. Right. I'm just not happy here. Yeah. You, may be not, you may be right, but I'm still voting. To yes. Vote. And a lot of those people this morning who were predicting dire, dire consequences are saying, listen, it, it, it's bad, bad but, but it's, we'll, we'll, we'll survive. Yes. And yeah. I think that's true. I, I think it's going to be messy. I think at times it's going to be scary. And I think there are going to be, you're, you're going to look at a wave of this happening in Europe and other places and saying, well, could it happen here too? All right, let's go to Chip Reed at the White House. Chip? Well, the president went to the United Kingdom in April, and he argued quite strenuously for the United Kingdom to stay in the European Union. And the people who wanted to leave told him to butt out. It's none of your business. He has now put out a statement that says the people of the United Kingdom have spoken, and we respect their decision. The special relationship between the United States and the United Kingdom is enduring, and the United Kingdom's membership in NATO remains a vital cornerstone of U.S. foreign security and economic policy. So, too, is our relationship with the European Union. This came out eight minutes before the markets opened, and I think clearly what this is is an effort to try to calm the markets a bit. We'll see if it works at all. Uh, also, this from German Chancellor Angela Merkel. She says the European Union is strong enough to find the right answers to Britain's vote to leave the bloc. But they've got to look for answers now. Mm -hmm. I think I think I think what you're seeing and you're hearing it. I mean, the Prime Minister of France called this an electroshock this morning. Mm -hmm. They all have to look at what happened in Britain and say, what does that mean for us? How do we approach this union? Does the union have to change? And and uh, and that's going to be a process that takes a while. And there will be, I suspect, there will be other referenda on the table in some of these countries. And they now know the risk is they could lose. I've already heard the term "fucks it" this morning. Do you see any yeah. upside? Well, I mean. We haven't been here before. Yeah, That's never the point. Before, right. We haven't been here before. And and I think what you're seeing is is a clear demonstration of a backlash uh, against the situation mm -hmm. in the globe at this point. Take yourself into the boardroom of huge financial institutions. Yes. What are the questions they're asking and what are their options? Well, they're they're looking at what's happening here right now and they're saying, what does this mean? Right. And I and I think until until this plays itself out. And there was a lot of fear mongering on both sides right. going into this until this plays itself out. Uh, and I don't think it'll be as catastrophic as either side portrayed it. But but there are going to be some real bumps in this road. And and there's no question that the right wing parties of Europe will be enormously emboldened by this. And that is going to create waves of turmoil across Europe for some time. And and if you're a business, you want to know what does that mean for me. we just saw Donald Trump in Scotland yes. identifying with the spirit of the voters. And, and calling it fantastic. Britain. But J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs already this morning issued a letter to their, to their clients to say, listen, we're on top of this. And, yeah. we, and the Federal Reserve has said we're watching this very closely, Was that too. important for them to do, Anthony? Uh, they so have quickly. to watch yeah. it because, it, I mean, you're going to see, you're going to see hit a lot of volatility in the next two years as, 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 because there are going to be issues that come up here that we haven't even anticipated. We should you mention know. that the Dow's down 500 right now, which is significant. It does not appear to be in, in free fall. No, it, you know, it's moment. funny that 500 looks actually pretty good at yeah. this point <laughs> yeah. uh, relative to what happened in Europe. Uh, almost 3%. That's, that's a lot. Um, well, but what we, would be catastrophic? Well, I mean... <laughs> Three percent is pretty bad if you're yeah. if you're trying to cash out today. Um, so I, I don't want to be relative, but we saw we saw. I mean, overnight we saw the pound in Britain as the votes were coming in in the middle of the night. The yeah. pound yeah. fell ten yeah. percent, you know, to levels we haven't seen in thirty quickly, years. Yeah. And and there's going to be more pressure on it still. Great for me. I have a daughter in college in Scotland. You know, yes. my tuition got cheaper. <laughs> but if you're li living in England, your money's mm -hmm. worth less. And what Great Britain's got to do now is go re go negotiate all kinds of trade agreements and all kinds the, of economic and, relationships. And that's the they thing. They no longer do it as part of the European Union. They do it now. And alone. some of those deals take literally yeah. half a dozen years and, to And to President negotiate. Obama got into a little trouble when he was in Great Britain by saying they're going to have to go to the bottom, the end of the queue. Mm -hmm. No, I think, I mean... A, a, a very prominent British historian said on television last night he, he feared a really dark period for Europe 
and, and that's the worst case scenario. Yeah. But I, I think a lot of European leaders are worried about that. At a time that Europe was already having lots of trouble yes. because of yeah. refugee crisis and other things. Yeah. Many questions remain. As the Financial sure. Times said today, the world's most complicated divorce. Right. Yes, sure. and divorces are years. never pretty. Never good. This one ain't, <laughs> is going to be years. particularly ugly. Our coverage will continue throughout the day on our 24-hour streaming network, CBSN. There'll be a full wrap-up tonight on the CBS Evening News with Scott Pelley.